What's good? I'm Xavier from DRC Trainer. Today is going to be part five in my series for how I overcome self rejection as a personal trainer. Now, this one is going to deal with retention. So retention is keeping clients that you currently have. Now, I'm going to make more in-depth videos in the future breaking down different methods of retention with existing clients. But the bare minimum in the last video, I recommended five books that you can read that's going to allow you to become a better people person. When you are a people person, it's easier to keep the people that you have. Because you build a rapport with them, you have a history with them, you know things about them, they know things about you. You guys are able to get along in a professional manner and then some would be friends or at least for them to feel like you're a part of their family because of how you're dealing with them. So you always want to make sure that you're doing things in an ethical manner. Now, four books I'm going to recommend. Three of them are going to be from the previous video. So it's going to be The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox, um, Lynchpin, and Tribes. So Tribes comes in handy in this scenario because you always want to make sure that um, you are networking with your clients. So a lot of times I have clients and they might need an employee and I might have another client that's looking for a new job. And a lot of times I might have done like a consultation with somebody who didn't buy training, but I remember that, hey, they're a real estate agent. I have a client who just got all the proper licenses to become a real estate agent. They're looking for a job. As I'm training them, I can introduce them to that person on the floor. Um, outside of that, I always make sure that my clients uh, are friends or at least are aware of other clients that are similar to them just because it's easier for them to come to the gym or they look forward to coming to the gym when they're going to see that person. A lot of times when people have similar personalities and I can tell they get along, uh, I'll put merge their sessions together. So if they both want to train at five, I'll charge them each for training and they can both train at five with each other. And nine times out of ten, they become the best of friends and it allows me to consolidate my schedule and it allows them to get more from the training session because it's always fun when you are training with somebody that's like-minded that's not holding you back from your goals now linchpin by self going is going to be key because again people have to feel like you're indispensable in order for them to want to keep you around so that's making sure that you're providing results that you're giving them things to track and that they understand you know why that you're why you're imperative because the number one thing is could people train by themselves most people can, some people can't. Their results are obviously going to vary um, versus they were working with a trainer. But if you're not doing your part to make them understand that you are an integral part of their fitness journey, then of course you're going to lose that client. Um, outside of that, I'm also going to recommend Eat That Frog. Eat That Frog breaks down uh, productivity hacks and habits that you can pick up and build. So one, it's going to be easier for you to keep your clients on track. And it's also going to be easy for you to give them actionable information. I always take certain things like planning out the week, uh, breaking down tasks and understanding what needs to be delegated, and what needs to be done by them solely so that it's easier for them to get in and train. It's easier for them to stick with their meal plan and it's easier for them to accomplish so many other things in life. And when you have this kind of knowledge and things that you can impart to your clients, it's going to make you more indispensable and they are going to want to have you around. Now, outside of that, obviously you have to, Get them results. You have to reassess every month or so. You have to have the people skills to talk with them when they are not accomplishing their goals. So that way, instead of talking down to them or making them feel bad, because I've been in gyms with trainers belittling their clients for eating a piece of cake, going out to eat, going out to drink. You want to be able to speak with them in such a way that you gently remind them of what their goals are, what their whys are, and what they can do to stay on track. And a lot of times trainers don't do that. Either they say nothing, they co-sign a bad behavior, or they belittle them. So when you do have some self-development books under your belt and some habit books under your belt, you can take that information and give it to your clients. Most of the stuff I read is not stuff that I need to know personally. It's just I read different things because it will allow me to come up with sound bites and bits of information that I could pass on to somebody else. Now, that's going to be the number one thing for client retention. Um, outside of that, changing the workout, tracking their weight, doing their measurements, um, checking in on them in terms of what they're doing with their meal plan. And if you don't, uh, let's say you don't give out meal plans and different things like that, that's going to affect your retention. Find another trainer in the gym to see if they're willing to sell your client a meal plan. Um, if your client can't afford it or it's going to conflict with training and you can't afford it, I always encourage people not saying that you have to. But to buy meal plans from that trainer so that way when you do have clients that come in or barter with that trainer, come up with some kind of system where you can have something to give to your clients because that's also going to increase uh, retention. Um, something that I do is I always try to find local restaurants that offer the catering menu 
or people who actually sell meal preps, like most gyms have somebody that sells meal prep. There's a number of different things you can do that a lot of times you look at like, oh, if they're spending money on that, they don't need me. When actually it's an additional tool that they wouldn't have if it wasn't for you. So it allows you to keep retention because like, let's say if they were going to go out and spend money at Popeye's, McDonald's, and you know, with friends and different things like that, but now they're investing their money into something different and they're getting the results that they want. There's going to be one more reason why they should keep you as a trainer. And not saying that people have to keep you forever, but when you are more personable, you get more from people. For example, I started training in Chicago over 10 years ago. Anytime I go back for a holiday or people see that on social media, I'm back in Chicago, people will pay me to come train them. On the same token, uh, when I first started training in Chicago, I had a client that ended up moving to Indianapolis. That's like a three hour drive away from Chicago. They would come out on Friday and train with me, Saturday train with me, Sunday train with me, and then head back to Indianapolis. Uh, when I trained in Miami, I had people who would fly to Miami just to have a couple of training sessions with me. And the same when I lived in Atlanta and the uh, same now that I'm here in Houston, like when you are uh, worthwhile as a trainer, people will be willing to travel to you. People will be willing to do things just to be able to get a personal training session with you because they miss that experience that you give. Now, that's all I'm going to touch on in this video. I'm probably going to make a couple more videos on sales objections. If you guys have any sales objections that you want me to cover, make sure you comment below. I'm Xavier from DX the Trainer, and I'm out.